What's up, what's up, what's up everyone? Adrian Morrison here and I wanna welcome you to tonight's Profit Power Hour. I have a really cool training ready for you. I think you're really gonna enjoy this. It's gonna be extremely enlightening for you. And uh, yeah, we're gonna dive into it here pretty soon. So everybody should be able to see my screen right now. Um, what we have up is our just typical welcome screen. Um, at the tippy top, if you don't have a Shopify store yet, um, we have a uh, you know an app that we have built that will build a store for you completely free and add 20 products to it that you can get started with. <clears throat> okay, that is at profitph.com forward slash free store. Now you got to pay for your Shopify store. Um, you know, the, the monthly fee for that, but I believe, Ooh, I think my nose is really sunburnt right now. Um, I think that, uh, right now they're doing like a three month, $1 per month trial. So you have, you know, very little risk. There's three bucks to start your Shopify store and our app will build it for free. And then at the bottom there, we have um, our recommended vendors. Now, our recommended vendors um, are kind of always here. We update them, change them, remove some, put some back. Um, as I kind of just have my um, finger on the pulse, if you will, of all of these companies, I'm very close with some of the founders. And, uh, you know, I like to make sure that you're using a company that I have vetted, basically, um, because it sucks when you get stuck with a bad actor company and vendor that messes up your shipping or sends bad quality products, uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So we got Pillow Profit, Shine On, Zen Drop, CJ Drop Shipping, all phenomenal companies. Um, tonight, we're actually going to be looking at Pillow Profits, but the product that's there, you can um, you can get it, I believe, other vendors as well, such as T-Launch and I think Printful maybe. Um, I'm not positive on Printful, but um, I'm going to show you through Pillow Profits, a great company, and uh, it's going to be cool. Okay. So if you're new to the Profit Power Hour, first off, welcome. We do this every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, it's really just a way for me to connect with you, show you how to add new products to your store, things that are trending right now, traffic strategies so you can target ads and get you know, good traffic to your store, which hopefully will turn into converted customers, right? Um, and it's just important that... <clears throat> You put it in your calendar to show up here every single week because we don't always have replays and we don't always, um, you know, if we do a replay, we don't always show the full thing. Sometimes I'll cut things out. If there was like more sensitive information, I don't just want like posted uh, for people to copy. Okay. Because um, we stream these live. That's why you're logging on GoToWebinar right now and um, all of this is showing up. <clears throat> okay. So welcome. All right. And if you have not yet, make sure that you join our uh, Facebook group, okay? It's called the Profit Power Hour Facebook group. And you can get to the group by simply going to um, this URL right here, facebook.com slash groups slash profit ph. Now, many of you are that are new, uh, we're just getting like an immense amount of new people um, in our community every day. Uh, many of you are in the Ecom Mastery with Adrian group, which is uh, a very beginner uh, group. The Profit PH group is is different, it's separate. It's still, you know, we welcome beginners, but it's really a group for people that get on this webinar to discuss the things that, um, you know, I, I teach each and every week. And um, there's a lot of veteran e-commerce entrepreneurs in there um, that hang out around the group too. So you'll kind of see them respond and make posts. All right. So if you're already in that group, you can go there or the Ecom Mastery group. Tell everybody to pop on because Adrian is going to dun 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 show us how to combine two popular niches and tap into a 40 uh, a you know 40k month per month niche, okay? Or product, okay? 
Now, does that mean that um, you're going to make a $40,000? $40, and it's actually more than that. It's significantly more than that. But I'll, I'll tell you why I put 40K earlier. Are you going to make 40 grand a month? Let's just go ahead and write down on this product, on this niche, no. Okay. Um, so by no means am I saying you're going to make um, a single dime. I don't like to talk about money because everybody you know does something different and a lot of people do nothing right a lot of people launch one ad see it doesn't work and then they give up and thus never get any results um but you're gonna see the stats there are products that are generating roughly forty thousand dollars a month on amazon i'll show you the stats um and that's a good signal to us that we could tap into it um and it would be a uh it would be a product that was worth our time, right? A product that's worth our time. So again, not saying that you're gonna make 40 grand a month, it's just this is a product um, that is doing um, you know, more than that in sales every month and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> and it's something that we can use to get inspiration from and market similar items to this, okay? So I just wanna clarify that disclaimer there. Um, this is not get rich quick. It's not press a button and make money. This is real business. Um, you know, oftentimes you're going to launch ads that aren't going to work out of the gate and you're going to need to tweak them. That's what these webinars are for here is for me to show you how to do all of that. So you know what to do um, each step of the way. Okay. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Now, again, if you are uh, new to the webinar series, you all have access to our main portal, which is the Access Adrium portal. Here it is. And you can go to your Profit PH, Profit Power Hour um, tab under My Courses and Software, click on that, and then you can click on Access, and then you can click on Webinar Replays, then you can click on 2023 Replays, and you can look at each week's replay if we are able to post it. So you'll see there's a gap between June 20th in july 11th oftentimes we're just every single week there's a new one okay so you can go back and watch these um last week's webinar was really great i mean it we got a lot of great feedback on last week's webinar so you know if you go back make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel we crossed over 50,000 subscribers which is cool because i don't really post a lot there so these are all organic people coming and subscribing um but you know we talked about um evergreen niches those are niches that in products that sell all year round. Then we talked about seasonal and viral product waves that are you know intelligent to tap into. And I, I want to point something out real quick as I as I try to pull up um, our notes because uh, I don't have my iPad plugged in right now. I'm going to maximize this so it's going to kind of look like Inception a little bit because you're going to see me with a backwards hat on the left hand corner. Um, but what we talked about, and I'll just walk you through this, is evergreen niches. That's a niche that, um, you know, steadily gets sales. It's sustainable. It's consistent. It doesn't disappear. Um, and then you got seasonal and viral uh, product and niche waves where these are things that only hit during spring, summer, or fall or winter. Or there's something that just goes viral for a short period of time, like the fidget spinner. It doesn't really matter what season it is. It's just, it's it's taking the internet by storm um, at that period in time. And so the niches, uh, the viral niches and the seasonal niches have these peaks and then they fizzle down and then they might peak back up next season and fizzle down again. The uh, Viral niches, uh, the viral products, they they peak and then they just crash. And they typically uh, oftentimes never really recover because they were in, an impulse viral niche. Whereas those evergreen niches, just steady, right? So um, I want to point something out because someone in, uh, I don't know, someone commented underneath, uh, one of my ads or something. And, you know, there's always people that are I'm not going to get into it because this is about training, but there also is a lot of mindset in regards to entrepreneurship. But, um, you know, I talk about putting viral products on your store to get started. And somebody, 
questioned me and actually, you know, trolled me a little bit and was like, oh yeah, listen to this dude, uh, put viral products on your store that are trending right now, that are going to crash. Um, essentially, basically he was calling me an idiot. Um, <laughs> and that's fine. That's okay. Because he was schooled very quickly thereafter. Um, <clears throat> why would you, why would you out of the gate want a product that's trending right now? That's, that's a, a, a legitimate question. Why would you want a product that's trending right now when you're a beginner, even though you know it is going to fizzle and crash maybe in a month, maybe three weeks, whatever it is, right? Why would you want to market something that isn't consistent, that isn't sustainable, right? Well, it's because impulse viral purchase products are much easier to sell than boring, consistent, sustainable products. The, the, the viral products are gonna have most likely, not guaranteed, but most likely higher profit margins. And it's because you're getting more clickers, right? You're getting a higher click rate, meaning more people that see your ad are clicking because it's viral and it's hot, it's trending right now. Um, you're likely gonna have a higher conversion rate because everybody wants to buy this product because it's the it thing to have right and your margin your profit margin is probably going to be higher on this product because of the impulsive viral buyers um that could be coming in does that make sense and when you're starting out let's face it you're not going to have the best ads in the world your store isn't going to be as perfect as it could be you're not going to have all of your upsells in place and you know it takes time to build this out and that's why we do this webinar series but uh, more importantly, when you're a beginner, right, it makes more sense to sell, to start out selling some of the things that are trending right now, because it's probably a lot easier to acquire customers um, on a trending, viral, impulsive purchase item. Does that make sense? And once you start getting some sales, hopefully, right, uh, of that product, that gives you hopefully a foundation, a base, right? Some, some revenue that has come in. You learn a lot from it, but you also have now, hopefully, right? Some profit that you can invest and you always wanna start marketing those sustainable evergreen products and evergreen niches as well. So you're catching these waves, right? Um, because they're a lot, more volume in sales, faster sales, higher conversion rates, higher profit margins oftentimes. And then you can take that, right? And use some of that money and reinvest it into those sustainable niches that might take a little bit longer for you to convert, might have lower uh, profit margins, but are more consistent. It's okay to make less profit if you have a, a product that's gonna consistently convert every day or every week or every month, you know what I'm saying? So you really, in my opinion, need both, right? And that's what I told the dude that commented um, trolling me. And he came back and said, wow, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Thank you, right? So it's not just about doing evergreen products that are boring. And it's not just about doing um, you know, viral and seasonal products that happen to be trending right now. It's about understanding how to utilize both of those things. How do you tap into those niche products and uh, I'm sorry, those viral products to hopefully get some higher profit margins real fast. And then um, once you've done that, take that money, reinvest it in your you know, more sustainable campaigns with lower profit margins as you're trying to figure out what those are. Um, and that's, that's really how it works. Okay, so I spent longer talking about that than I wanted to, but it's important, you know, everybody's got their own opinion and, and they they come up to me all the time and they're like, I don't think you should have general stores. I think you should have a niche store. And I go, okay, well, guess what? I've run a general store and a niche store. They both crushed it. The difference is the niche store is dead. It's dead, it crashed. And the general store is still up and running, right? So it's not an opinion for me, it's it's just fact, right? From my experience in the business that I run. And um, there's a lot of right ways to do something. There's a lot of wrong ways to do something. My way isn't the only way, it's just the way that I do it and you're here to learn from me. So I'm gonna teach you the way I do it, you know? Okay, that said, 
let's talk about this niche or this product. I'm sorry, uh, this product that um, it takes essentially uh, you, you're going to combine it is a niche itself and it is a product it is literally a niche and a product all right i want you to take note of that the product is also a niche in itself but it's more powerful when combined with the second niche um lately what we have been doing is we've been going to this list of hobbies on wikipedia so if you go to wikipedia and you just type in list of hobbies um it's going to give you a lot of just, it's going to give you a lot of stuff that you can start kind of tapping into and we we have a little bit of a system in place that we've built once we have found a niche um that that we would like or a hobby that we would like to uh partake in in researching and advertising okay so um what is that what is that strategy okay so let me just come back over here i don't have my whiteboard um today plugged up it's just a you know i forgot to so i'm not even going to worry with it right now um what is our our research system all right so our profitable niche product research system okay all right so step number one what we've been doing is number one okay step one all right everybody with me yes all right is um wikipedia.com um list of hobbies all right and then we locate a hobby all right then step number two is we go to google trends google trends and we validate it's a 50 plus score um right now okay so we want it to be a 50 plus score right now um or about or you know over the last like six months or even 12 months okay everybody with me on that all right now um once we do that step number three gotta get rid of the underline step three is going to be um let's validate it a little bit more but you're not able to do this yet because the software is not available at the moment it will be in the future all right just not now we're beta testing uh, we will essentially um research amazon uh sales volume and we do this with my app called signal boost all right you're not able to do that now and you don't have to use that in order to it just further validates that it's worth your time um and in the future you'll be able to get it when we put it out for sale and you'll get a discount on it no it's not going to be a thousand dollars or any, anything like that okay um, it's, I don't know what it'll be, but you're going to get a huge discount and it's not going to be expensive because um, I want you to be able to use it. Um, then after that, typically what we do is we look at TikTok. Um, you know, we look at are there TikTok viral videos with 1 million plus views? All right. Now, if we if we put all these things together we know it's a hobby that's listed on wikipedia we know it's trending on google we know that it's generating a decent sales volume on amazon and we also know that on TikTok people are making videos about it um and it's getting or similar to items that we're selling and they're getting millions of views um or hun even hundreds of thousands is okay then we got we got something that's probably worth our time even without step number four, if it hits on these three, it's probably worth your time. So it doesn't have to be all four, but if it's all four, then we know it's gonna be more powerful. But if you get three out of the four, then you're good, right? So that's what we do. Now, the save is time tonight, uh, because I know that historically I banter, right? I get it, I know I can't keep my mouth shut. Um, I've already come up with uh, a case study to show you and that way I want everything moves uh, smoothly okay and I know that this works 
Uh, and, it, you know, I'm going to show you the research that, that proves it. Okay, so coming back over to Wikipedia here, um, I was scrolling down this list, and I'm always looking at this list myself. I, I just keep this tab open. I would recommend that you open up Wikipedia um, and you put it on your, you know, just a tab and you pin it, okay? Uh, and so I scrolled down, and as I was going down, I saw jigsaw puzzles. Now, I'm going to, you know, admit the reason jigsaw puzzles stuck out to me um, it is because it had this little 32 by it. Um, and so these ones that have extra little numbers by them for whatever stick out to my eyeballs. And so I was like, oh, jigsaw puzzles. Okay, that's cool. Um, jigsaw puzzles blew up during the pandemic because everybody was bored as hell and they were quarantined at home. So they started doing puzzles. So I actually, um, you know, essentially didn't advertise jigsaw puzzles, um, after that big boom, because people were just played out on puzzles, but it's been three years, you know, at least two. And, you know, there are people that are very passionate about jigsaw puzzles. Um, they just love doing jigsaw puzzles. So how do we validate this and make sure that currently right here, right now, as we sit here tonight, this is a uh, product or a hobby that is worth your time. And what I meant earlier by saying that this is both a product and a niche is, well, jigsaw puzzles is a hobby. A hobby is technically a niche. Make sense? But it's also a product, right? A jigsaw puzzle is a product that is a hobby. Hopefully that makes sense. Insect collecting, a little bit above it, is not a product. It is a hobby, all right? Um, hula hooping is a product and it is a hobby slash niche. Um, you know, judo is not a product. So some of these on this list, you're gonna notice they are products as well as niche, okay? So jigsaw puzzles. So what was the first thing that we do to validate this? All right, we go to Wikipedia, it's there, jigsaw puzzles, all right. Then we go to Google Trends and we wanna see what the Google Trends score is um, right now or over the last like 12 months or so, okay? See if it's got some consistency to it. So we come over here to Google Trends um, and there are various keywords you could type in, but I always try to go with the most generic one. So we'll just do jigsaw puzzle because you just, you, you could, just type in puzzle, but I want to do jigsaw puzzle specifically. Okay, so jigsaw puzzle. And um, if I come over here and I look at the last, uh, ooh, maybe I I uh, got some faulty data. Let's see. Let's see here. The data looks different, and I did this before I started. Okay. Well, it's definitely not showing the same data. All right, but you're going to see that um, this has got some big spikes, and then it's got, it's just boom, up and down, up and down, up and down. Like I said, I like to try to use the most generic term for something um, as possible, right? And if that doesn't give me what I want, then I can play around a little bit more and further see, like, see if I can get something to validate it. So let's just type in uh, puzzle. Okay. So puzzles. Now, um, this has a consistent score of well over 50 for the last 12 months. Jigsaw puzzle didn't. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of people that are searching for jigsaw puzzles probably just type in puzzles, right? They're looking for puzzles. Um, so we have a consistent 50 plus score. And it actually, if we go back, I bet you if we go back to, let's just do the past five years, you're going to see a big spike in 2020. Yeah. So there's this huge spike in 2020 for, for puzzles because people were bored. They're just sitting at home. They're putting together puzzles right now. There could be crossword puzzles. There could be 
you know, all sorts of different puzzles, but jigsaw puzzles were part of that family that were crushing it. All right. And, and you can see now um, it's, you know, it, it just, it always has like a wave. It always has a wave, but the big hundred percent score here in interest was in 2020, but it's consistently still over 50. All right. So it qualifies puzzles qualify. And if I go over the last 12 months of data for puzzles, you'll see that we're sticking above, um, you know, the 60 to the 70 range in interest. All right. So again, start with the like the exact term that you're looking for like jigsaw puzzle and even though it i saw different data earlier it um uh it still was not like the absolute and look you can see it right here it's i don't know what's going on here but it was it's it was showing some funky data earlier um but you could see here it's it's uh still over 50 plus and i'm just a little mind um i'm like mind bogged at the moment just simply because um it's like y'all saw me it must i must have had a typo or something and it's like i know i researched this beforehand so anyways um if the exact term that you're you're searching for doesn't show like very much data uh go to a more generic term like puzzles from jigsaw puzzle to regular puzzle but you can see both of them have um <clears throat> over 50 plus score all right perfect that's what i was looking for now the next thing that we do after we validate it with google trends which we did through puzzle and jigsaw puzzle um it's got over 50 plus score over the last 12 months and currently is we research the amazon sales volume now Without an app, you're not able to do this. And I've been paying for apps for a very long time um, for this that only do uh, Amazon sales volume research. And they're expensive. Like we're talking about, you know, um, well over $1,000 a year, yearly to have access to. So I've spent thousands of dollars on softwares, um, not just to do Amazon sales volume, but to find videos, to find trending products and do all sorts of stuff. And as you all know, I built my own software called Signal Boost. Um, and it, I really built it to save me money. I have, um, you know, a, a phenomenal coder and developer and entrepreneur as a partner. And um, she was able to code it and it just made sense. It's gonna, it, it's not cheap, but it's gonna save me a lot of money over time. Um, and I will release it to y'all. And if I sell enough of it, if enough users join Signal Boost, then it'll pay for itself. So that is a, a big win for everybody. All right. So it's a win win situation. Anyways, um, to show you how Signal Boost works, and I've been showing you all the last couple of, uh, of weeks this, and we got 10 or 12 beta testers in this right now. Again, could be a, a month before or two months before we release this. I'm not trying to sell it to you right now. Um, you just get to see me use it each week and benefit from the research that it does. Um, if I come over here to just research, what it's going to do is it's going to find me um, all the sales volume um, on Amazon. And if we know that selling on Amazon, then there's a good shot it's going to sell on a Shopify store. So when I type in jigsaw puzzle, all right, it starts finding all the jigsaw puzzles that are for sale with, with actual sales volume on Amazon. And I'm just going to um, zoom in on this so y'all could see it. I just want to make sure my screen's still being shared. Okay, it's, it can, it's being shared. Um, I'm still not able to, oh, well, no, it's organizing the data now. Thank goodness it wasn't earlier. Um, and we can see that some of these products here are doing $36,000 a month, $28,000 a month, $40,000 a month um forty three thousand dollars a month all right so would you all agree that jigsaw puzzles um are generating upwards of forty thousand dollars a month i mean this one puzzle right here um is doing forty thousand dollar forty two thousand dollars a month now this is data that we pull from amazon's api um and so like you know is this one thousand percent accurate um 
you know, I wouldn't say it's a gazillion percent accurate. Uh, is it fairly accurate? I believe so. Um, it's uh, it's pulling straight from their API. So um, I don't know. This is a rotating puzzles doing four hundred thousand dollars in a month. That's crazy. So we can see that puzzles are doing anywhere from a couple thousand dollars upwards of really forty thousand dollars a month. All right. So that validates that this is a really cool niche that we could tap into. But y'all, look, I mean, just knowing that it does $40,000 a month as a puzzle isn't really going to help us. I mean, what kind of puzzles are they, they you know, selling here? All right, so this is a uh, cat puzzle. So this one right here is doing $4,000 a month, um, and it is a called Kitty Chaos, and it's a bunch of crazy kittens all over a living room. I don't know if y'all can see this. And it's obviously gonna be something that is gonna crush for you know cat lovers. Then you've got this camper puzzle. Um, you've got this, uh, another cat puzzle here. You've got uh, a puzzle with birds. You've got, I don't even know what that is. Um, you've got a puzzle that has sweets like donuts and cupcakes and looks like each one has a little tush, like a little butt <laughs> on it. So I don't understand that, but it's called butts on things. Uh, oh, sweet cheeks. Now I get it. That's actually kind of clever. Um, and this one is doing what? 5,000 bucks a month. All right. So we have validated that, you know, this is a cool product that we could sell that has a lot of potential. You're not gonna have one jigsaw puzzle, probably, that's making you a gazillion dollars a month. Um, really what you want to do is you wanna have multiple jigsaw puzzles, right? So um, you wanna have cat jigsaw puzzles, dog jigsaw puzzles, um, sweet treats uh, jigsaw puzzles, you know, golfing jigsaw puzzles. So that is why in the beginning here I said, you know, um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to take two different niches and put them together on this product. And then I'll show you how this all works and how you would market it. So the next thing we want to look for is TikTok viral videos. I didn't research this before I started the webinar. Um, so I don't know, like, we'll see. But we only need three out of the four for it to make sense. It's a list of hobbies worthy of being on Wikipedia. It's got a 50 plus score on Google Trends. We know that the sales volume on Amazon, it ha there are jigsaw puzzles that are doing well and there's various different jigsaw puzzles that are raking in thousands of dollars in sales a month. Um, now let's see, are there actually people that do TikTok videos for jigsaw puzzles? I, I mean, I think that would make for a very boring video. I'm just gonna be honest. I, I really do think that, like, I, I'm not um, confident that we're gonna find like crazy viral jigsaw puzzles, but I don't know, let's, let's go look. So um, this is where we left off last week. We were looking at these little fly uh, things and they're, they're phenomenal, but let's just type in jigsaw puzzle never ceases to amaze me i'm legit shocked i mean i just i have to be serious i i didn't think that i thought we might get lucky and find one nice video but i mean this video has five million views right here um 28,000 3.1 million views on this puzzle. Um, this one's got, what is this? Uh, 5 million views. This goes to show, it like doesn't matter what you think. Um, always do the research. 2.7 million videos, 13.5 million videos on a jigsaw puzzle of a hamburger. Gluing is, someone's gluing a puzzle together, it looks like. Um, 912,000, 8 8.6, uh, 8.6, uh, million. This is a competition for puzzle putting together. I didn't know that that was a competitive sport. Um, 122,000, another 5.3 million, um, 
Well, I wish I could like go back in time and not look like an idiot and say we're not going to find viral videos for jigsaw puzzles. It just seemed a little bit boring to be like a viral video, but that's me. Like I, I could care less about jigsaw puzzles. Um, so I'm actually kind of uh, shocked. This one has 15.9 million. Wow. Wow. 15.9 million. Okay, well, we have validated on Wikipedia, Google Trends, Amazon sales volume, and most certainly hit videos with 1 million plus views on TikTok. Now, how do you launch your own jigsaw puzzle? All right, so first things first, um, you know, I like to use Pillow Profits, all right? So the Pillow Profits Fulfillment app is not free. They're 29 bucks a month. So if you want to search around for other uh, vendors, um, this is a Shopify app. And be my guest. Like I could care less if you use Pillow Profits or not. I really don't care. Okay. This is the company I like. I know the owner. I know they have great quality products and um, this is just who I use to long. I've made a lot of money selling their products. So naturally I'm going to recommend them. Um, the link to Pillow Profits is amsecretlink.com slash profits. Uh, that's just, you know, they'll take you straight to their app. You can install it. It's a partner link I have with them. And um, oftentimes they give, you know, my students extra special uh, treatment when they go through that link. They know you're tagged me. Um, so that's number one. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to um, step one. Now that we have a validated puzzle. All right. So we validated um, jigsaw puzzles are worthy. All right. Step number two is find um or validate a second niche to put on the puzzle so like what is the puzzle that people are going to put together all right well first off if we go into our shopify store gear grabber all right and i come over here you can see i've been playing with this already i wanted to be prepared since we're actually launching a product. Uh, Pillow Profits, if you go to add products, they have a lot of cool products that you could advertise um, and customize through here. But I'm gonna scroll down till we find the jigsaw puzzles, okay? So these are gonna be, uh, there's two types. There is a vertical and there is a horizontal based off what type of image you're, you put on there. Oh crap, I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, so I'm gonna go, with the vertical jigsaw puzzle. All right, now, it's just a clean slate and we can sell a thousand piece puzzle or a 500 piece puzzle. And this app, Shop uh, Pillow Profits, all we have to do is drag and drop a picture on here and it turns that picture into a puzzle. So, um, how do we get a picture that we could put on this puzzle that you know we can start selling? Well, you can come over to Shutterstock and you can start searching for images and artwork that you can get a license for and you can turn it into a puzzle so like um crazy cats art i don't know just made that up but you know this um uh, maybe like something like this this is pretty basic but you know, it's not crazy or anything, but you might have to look around until you find some some interesting art like this right here. I could see this right here being a pretty good uh, puzzle, right? Because it's got all the different colors. It's crazy looking. It's a bit confusing. It's going to be a bit more challenging. So like a pattern like this, that's kind of like this kind of reminds me of like Where's Waldo almost um, and his cats. Then we can advertise this to people that are um, you know, interested in cats and also interested in puzzles, right? Um, the other thing that we could do is, and what, what I did myself, because I love the dog niche, 
is we know that puzzle like a lot of most people have put a, played with puzzles in their past and we know it's a very popular niche you can see that through google trends it appeals to a lot of people there's a lot of um, search volume for it and so are dogs and so what i did earlier just messing around as i was researching this is i typed in um dog art and i started finding some really cool artwork like i mean look at this artwork of this pug right here um look at this artwork of the different dogs right here um here's another um was that like a frenchie at the bottom right um look at this with all the different types of dog breeds um i was just able to find like kind of cooler artwork um for dogs than cats but you know um you, you dig enough you'll find some really cool stuff and i know from experience these types of images right here sell very well because not this this exact one um or this exact artist but i've sold very similar images on yoga pants on shoes on handbags on tote bags on t-shirts I mean, you name it and produce an immense amount of sales volume so i'm going to show you something i know um like from experience right not something i'm guesstimating on if i have the opportunity to show you from experience that's what i'm going to do now um <clears throat> obviously this picture of this pug isn't going to stick out to everybody like not everybody wants to get a pug puzzle right not all dog dog owners have a pug um the most passionate group of dog owners are pit bull owners okay pit bull is two different words pit space bull and um i know this again because i have done an immense amount of sales in the dog niche and pit bulls just you know they're no comparison pit bull owners um are the most passionate and most willing to purchase so um i found this image down here right here i could find a better one definitely could find a better one and this now let me tell you what i don't like about this image for a jigsaw puzzle okay now i think the image is cool it's got color to it it's going to be challenging um but given that it has like the colors like this it, it's it's not too challenging because people can kind of say oh this piece has blue on it it's going to go somewhere near the ear or the side of the face or the right part of the neck like it makes it you know less challenging because it's not as busy of an image but it's pretty and a lot of people put puzzles together glue them together as you saw on TikTok, and they frame them literally as a picture um it's kind of interesting uh, i would never do that but that's what some people do what I don't like about this is the uh, clean space behind the image, all right? So uh, be it, you know, clean white space, clean, you know, uh, uh, black space, uh, be it, you know, solid green um, or blue, whatever, any clean, like solid color space behind it um takes away from the challenge a little or not necessarily the challenge actually because it's you gotta it um i said that wrong it doesn't take away from the challenge um it, it takes away from the fun of the puzzle a little bit because you're trying to put pictures together not just like a solid block of a color you see what i'm saying people like crazy images on jigsaw puzzles so what I did is I just hit download on this image because when I find an image, I could download it and get a license to it. And then I opened it up in um, a photo editor. All right, I used uh, Photoshop. You don't have to use Photoshop. And I wanted to get rid of some of the black space, as you could see, like I can uh, resize this, okay? So this is like what it normally would look like. And what I did is, even though it doesn't fit perfectly, it's okay. Um, I resized it to get rid of some of the black space. So you still can tell it's a dog. You still can tell it's a pit bull. A lot of things overlap, um, and it's totally fine. And you can move it around and center it. Um, and get the, maybe the top up here so you see the gold collar a little bit in. And boom. All right, so I saved this image. Now, Pillow Profits tells me 
that this image here, if I come over to Pillow Profits, da, 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 needs to be 6,150 by 9,100 pixels. Well, in pretty much any image editor, you can save an image um, of whatever size you want. So you hit save, and then it says what size do you want to save it as. You type in 61509100, and it saves the image. Okay, simple, easy. Okay, now what I can do is I come over here, grab the file because I already saved it, as y'all kind of saw earlier. Okay, here it is. It's up here. It's called the, the Pitbull Puzzle Vertical. I did this earlier tonight um, or this evening. It wasn't nighttime yet, but whatever. And I just drop it. And you're going to see the puzzle uh, get populated with the image. So give it a sec. Boom, there you go. Now you'll see the little, the, the black space that is around the image isn't as, uh, as, as, as much, right? Uh, the actual picture of the pit bull fills the majority of the puzzle now. So I can price this at whatever price I wanna sell it at. It is a custom puzzle. So we could do a premium price for it. And we can hit publish design and it is live and it's ready to sell in our store. So once this is for sale, people can buy it. Pillow Profits will process the orders. They will send out the product to the customers and you're just basically collecting that margin, right? Um, and you pay them after you, you generate a sale and you keep the difference, right? Whatever you marked it up. Um, so drop shipping works. Okay, so how do you sell this puzzle now that we've got a Pitbull jigsaw puzzle? Well, you can do TikTok ads. If you have run any dog fan pages or whatever, you can advertise it. Uh, but if I jump over here to ads in Facebook, <clears throat> let me pull it up real quick. Okay. All right, so we're in Facebook ads right now. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna skip all the, you know, nonsense because I'm just gonna show you targeting. We'll put in your daily budget, whatever your daily budget might be. And then we are going to set up our targeting. So let me turn this off, the Advantage Shopping Campaign. Hold on. I don't wanna do that, I want targeting. One second. The go-to webinar control panel is covering up some of the buttons. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So you set up your daily budget, five bucks a day, 10 bucks a day, um, you know, whatever you want it to be. And then under detailed targeting here, we can edit this. And first off, and we could come in here and we could type in puzzle, okay? So we can see that jigsaw puzzles have roughly in the United States, 14 million people interested in jigsaw puzzles. That's just in the US. Now we're not just gonna sell this in the US. Um, <clears throat> we also like to sell this in Canada. There we go. New Zealand. United Kingdom. Always start with these. Australia, and I've been saying it for years. People in Australia love to buy for whatever reason. And that takes us up to 20 million people. So we were able to get another 6 million people. You can see over here in the estimated um, audience size. All right, now, um, is everybody that's interested in jigsaw puzzles interested in dogs? No. Um, so what we can start doing, and this is gonna give you much smaller audiences, and you have to play with this, and you have to really kind of see you know, there's a couple of different ways to go about it. So you got to test, but we hit narrow audience 
and we can basically intersect our audiences and find who matches both of these interests. So I could type in pit bull. We got 22 million people interested in pit bulls. And let's see what it gives us. All right, this gives us 4.9 million people. Look at the right side where this little green bar is. 4.9 million people. So people that are interested in both jigsaw puzzles and pit bulls. Now, is this something that is going to sustain like this particular pit bull uh, puzzle? Is it going to be evergreen? Probably not. Um, not something that's like a big, you know, uh, money generator. Is it something I believe that would generate interest in customers? Um, if I personally were to launch it and do everything that I know I'm good at, yeah, I think I would sell some of these. Um, but really what the key is going to be is going to Shutterstock or other platforms and getting multiple pictures of pit bulls, right? And so you have multiple pit bull jigsaw puzzles. And when you do that, you're giving people options. Maybe they're going to buy two. Maybe they're going to buy three because um, they feel like it looks like their pit bull um, and not just like, a you know, there's pit bulls. There's so many. They look very quite different. They have different markings and whatnot. Um, so then we're going to go do this with Yorkies. We're going to do this with Pomeranians. We're going to do it with Pugs. We're going to do it with um, Labradors and Labradoodles. And, you know, you, you launch the line. Like you go to Google and you type in. I'll show you. Most popular dog breeds. We'll say 2023, but, you know, it's going to give us you know just historical for the most part labrador retriever french bulldog rottweiler golden retriever beagle bulldog germ so maybe we go and we grab like the top like 10 right um and and that's what we launch you're going to go crazy with the dog niche if you try to launch every dog um you know every single dog breed so we try to go for the top 10 or the top 15 breeds because this is where you're going to find more owners and more potential uh, customers dachshunds boxers collies um, miniature schnauzers corgis like corgi owners are like you know, crazy about corgis um and so now we can come over here and we could type in you know any type of uh dog breed slash art and then we can jump over to our Pillow Profits app and we launch another puzzle. And then we jump over to Facebook and we type in that dog breed under Jigsaw Puzzles. Now, that's going to give us smaller audiences. Again, watch. If I type in, what was that number one dog breed? Labrador. Okay. There we go. It's 5 million people on Labradors as well. All right, so maybe you're getting like 5 million here, another 3 million there. You you're, you're end up, you're going to be marketing to tens of millions of people. So that's nice. Um, but, but what if like we don't intersect and we don't market to people that love puzzles and Labradors? What we would do is we would just market to people that love Labradors. And that's going to take it up to... 56 million uh, people, so we're not going to do that. Hold up. I just did it wrong. Get rid of that. Am I missing something here? Because it didn't say that many so it's 17 million i must be missing a setting usually the reach right here is what gets you like crazy reach anyways um what we want to do is if it's that big of a number is we want to come in and we want to start like really niching down the keyword or the interest not just the labradors but the people specifically interested in different keywords relevant to labradors um like i can tell you like pitbull rescue all right, you'll find here 100,000 people here, 71,000 here, 27,000 here. Um, it'll so now we got 
323,000 people on this keyword, but we can add a couple more. And so pit bulls and pro leaves, that's a television show. That's 1.2 million people. And then we've got, um, there's a couple more, there's a lot more pit bull keywords we could find. If we dig deeper, you'll see me do it before. And we can get a couple million people that are just interested in the dogs themselves. Maybe try to build it up to a 5 million to 10 million audience. It's going to give you different people probably because, and you're using more passionate interests and they're not all going to be interested in puzzles, but inevitably some of them probably will be. So you have to test like, the intersect plus a, um, a campaign or ad group or ad set of uh, you know very specific niche keywords that you build up a very passionate people about just dogs and see can you get some of them to buy um, the puzzle. So I know that this is a lot uh, to to pop if you're new in, in an hour. You know they're not always like as uh, some of these are more technical. Some of these are, are really chill where we just look at uh, viral products. But tonight, really what I wanted to do was I, I wanted to show you how to go through this step-by-step -step, uh, process where we find a niche or hobby. We find that it's trending on Google. And you saw, even I screwed up. I'm like, whoa, wait, hold on a second. The research isn't what I thought it was um, with Google Trends. And I made a typo, whatever. I didn't even see it, but apparently I made a typo. Um, so always double, triple check your work. Do it a couple of times. Um, then we got Amazon sales volume. Then TikTok. I didn't think there was going to be viral jigsaw puzzles, but there are. There's tons. All right. And then we went to a fulfillment center um, that had jigsaw puzzles. And um, we found a really big niche, which is dogs. Dogs are a huge niche. Cats are a huge niche. And um, sweets. People are obsessed with sweets. That's why you saw that one puzzle selling. And we, we basically found some artwork, copy and pasted it or drag and dropped it into Pillar Profits. Boom, it created the puzzle for us, which we could publish and start selling immediately with no inventory. And then lastly, we went to Facebook ads and I showed you how to intersect audiences for people that like jigsaw puzzles and imagine jigsaw puzzles and coffee, jigsaw puzzles and dogs, jigsaw puzzles and cats, jigsaw puzzles and baseball, jigsaw puzzles and football you want to do really big audiences like really large audiences um for that second niche right because if it's too small you're gonna ha not gonna have a lot of people to advertise to but everybody like not everybody but most everybody likes football right and basketball and baseball you're gonna get these big audiences and thus you know more potential customers Whew. take a sip of water it's a lot of talking. Okay. That's it. All right. So <laughs> I know that's an abrupt ending, but we've been going for 58 minutes. Um, so in one hour, I've shown you how to find a niche, validate a niche in a product, um, find, you know, uh, viral videos for it launch it as a product and target it on Facebook. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, go see if you can sell some, some jigsaw puzzles, right? It'd be interesting to see what you launch, if you sell it or don't sell it, what worked, what doesn't work. Um, so just keep us posted in the Facebook group. So that is it for tonight. I love you all. Um, I will see you next week. Same place, same time right here on the profit power hour. We are literally going now, um, what is it? That's a five, six, uh, wow. Eight to nine years strong doing this webinar. That's, that's crazy. Um, yeah, nine years. Holy cow. Um, going on nine years doing this webinar. So, uh, thanks to those of you that have stuck with me for so long. Um, and I will see you next Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern here on the profit power hour. Okay. That is it. Good night. I wish you all a ton of success.